So uh, with uh, graduated cylinders, the rules hold the same. Uh, just to review them, uh, Peter, whatever the graduates go up by, you can guess to the next place. Okay. So if your graduated cylinder goes up by hundreds, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, then, you, Ian, you would guess out to the tens place. So I'm guessing I got 580 milliliters, so you guess to the tens. If the graduates go up by tens, Kyla, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, then you guess out to the ones. So you might guess that I've got 112 milliliters. I'm guessing to the ones place. But if your graduated cylinder goes up by ones, so that's 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. If they go up by ones, then you guess out to the tenth place. So that's why with this graduated cylinder here, um, that's 53, and that's 54. And so we know that the meniscus is between 54 and 53. So then, Laurel, we guess out to the tenths. And so that's why in this picture here, the five is our guess. We're guessing out to the tenths. And the five and the three we're sure about. So we have a total of three sig figs. So same thing occurs in this first graduated cylinder, Bailey. They're going up by ones. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. So if it's going up by ones, you must guess to the tenths. So if you think that it's right on the money there, Bethany, and you think it's 56, you still have to guess out to the tenths. So it becomes 56.0. That's the guess. Those we're sure about. Three six things. Now, sometimes graduated cylinders go up by 0.5, like they did down here. Um, if you're going to guess out to the tenths, you must go up by ones. If you want to guess out to the hundredths, it must go up by 0.1. So either you got to go up by 1 or 0.1. If you're going up by 0.5, 0.5 is not going up by tenths. You're going up by half steps. So basically what you have to do is um, I drew this kind of more like a scale, like 10, 1, point 0.1. If you go up by tens, you guess to the ones. If you go up by one, you guess to the tenths. But point 0.5 is in the middle here. So it's still considered going up by ones. So that means you guess to the tenth. So if you're going up by half steps, if you're going up by point 0.5, you would still guess out to the 10. So that's why in this graduated cylinder down here, um, it says that it's, there's our meniscus. Mm -hmm. We would still guess out to the 10th place because basically you know it's between 42.5 and you know it's between 43.5, so you know it's between 42 and 43 is basically what you know. So then you guess out to the tenths. That's still the guess. So let's see then if you guys can read a graduated cylinder.
If you flip a couple pages in, you'll see these three cylinders, 10, 11, and 12. Let's take a look at uh, number 11 here first. Um, Jared, what would you say the volume is for number 11 here? What are the graduates? What are the lines going up by? One. One. So there's 90, 91, 92, 93. That's 95. That's 96. That's 94. So if they're going up by ones, where do we guess out to? So 95.0, because Jared's guessing it's exactly 95. So that would be our guess. Those numbers we're certain about. We have a total of three sig figs. Yes, honey. Are you always going to be certain of the first number, or would someone be like, oh, if it's 94.9? We'll start doing the rules, but the last digit, the last significant figure is always the guess. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the numbers, the rest of the significant digits will be certain. Okay. So there's not like a different way to interpret it. It would always be like, if you look at that, it has to be 95, or else it's. Uh, no, you could interpret it as 94.9. Mm -hmm. Then the 9 would be your guess, and the 9 and the 40 you'd be certain about. Okay. Uh, how about number 12 there, uh, Krieger? Because um, it goes up by 1s, you have to guess out to the 10th. So there's the guess. There they're sure about. Now 10's a little tricky because it's going up by 0.5. It's got to go up by tenths in order to guess up to the hundredths. So because it's not going up by tenths, it's really going up by ones. So it's like 80, 81, 82, 83, so we know it's between 81 and 82. So what would you uh, make a guess there, Taylor? 81.5. 81.5. So the 0.5 is the guess. And the 81 we're sure. About. Okay, so let's um, go through now the rules of significant figures. Again, I just want to remind you, the point of significant figures is that when you take a measurement, you have a way to communicate to somebody which numbers you're sure about, which numbers are guesses. So if I was writing a research paper and I said I've got 95.0 milliliters, then I would know that that .0 is a guess and I'm certain about the 9 and the 5. Just like if I told you that worldwide temperatures are going up 2.2 degrees centigrade. Which number am I guessing about? Now let's make it like this, 2.3 degrees centigrade. So worldwide temperatures are going up 2.3 centigrade per year. What is the guess? 0.3. The 0.3. So I might be off here, but I'm not off there. I'm certain that every year the global temperature is going up by 2 degrees centigrade. It might be 2.2, might be 2.4, but it's at least 2 degrees centigrade a year. By the way, I just made that number up, Mitchell. It's not going up by 2 degrees a year, okay? That would be huge, because that would be about 4 degrees Fahrenheit a year. So that would be pretty intense. So thankfully it's not going up that fast. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to the rules, and then I'm going to do examples on another piece of paper. 
So it's up to you if you want to rewrite the rule. I am going to rewrite the rule so it's right there with the example. The first few examples are easy, and then it starts to get a little tricky, tricky. So the first rule uh, is non-zeros are always significant. So we're going to do a lab here, Kyla, and you need to weigh out some sodium chloride. You go out to the balance, you scoop it on there, and the balance tells you that it weighs 4.862 grams. Okay? So that's what the balance shows you. The balance is making the guess for you. So the 2 is the guess. Non-zeros are significant. Is that a zero? No, that's what I mean by non-zero. It's just not a zero. So non-zeros are significant. The two is the guess. These numbers we're sure about. And we have a total of four sig figs. So non-zeros are always significant. So rule one deals with digits that are not zero. Rules two through seven deal with zero. Zero is what's tricky. Zero is what gets people goofed up. Yep, Kyla. Yep, take the red pass over there. So rule two. Zeros trapped between non-zeros are significant. So rules two through seven are going to deal with zero. It says that zeros trapped between non-zeros are significant. So you have to go weigh out some uh, copper kateri, and so you go to the balance, you put some copper metal on your balance, and your balance reads this. Four point zero zero five grams. So. These two zeros, Mitchell, are trapped between two non-zeros. So if they're trapped between two non-zeros, they are significant. And therefore, the five is your guess. These three we're sure about. We have a total of four sig figs. Yep, Megan. Is the last number always going to be the No. So, because um, probably right now you're like, oh, this seems pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to use my wording very carefully. The last significant digit is always the guess, but not the last number. So the first two rules, it's coincidental that the last number is the guess. But it's the last significant digit that's that's the guess, and so um, it's going to change a little bit here with rules three through seven.
So rule three, it says that zeros It says, oh yeah, the zeros to the right of the decimal and to the right of a non-zero are significant. Zeros to the right of the decimal and to the right.